Though this franchise is named after its iconic bear mascot Freddy, a modern version of the original Fredbear, easily the most important character in the series, and the most terrifying, is none other than his loyal sidekick and best friend, Bonnie the Rabbit. Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier and welcome to Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh! Hello everybody, you ready to have a good time? The darkest pit of hell has opened to the following force. So don't keep the devil waiting, friend. End communication. Sometime before 1983, a man named Henry Emily and his business partner William Afton opened Fred Bear's Family Diner. With a focus on rad, cool kid food like pizza, Fred Bear's is a family-friendly children's entertainment restaurant with their mascots being Fred Bear, the, the well, you know, bear, and Spring Bonnie. The name Spring Bonnie was first given to the Golden Bunny mascot in FNAF World. It's likely his name was simply Bonnie, but to differentiate them for the community, Scott put Spring in front of it. And though the name character of Spring Bonnie only shows up in FNAF World and 8-Bit minigames, it's safe to say that the more detailed version Glitch Trap from Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted is their canon appearance, given that old promotional flyers for Fred Bears and Security Breach depict a near identical design. Now you may be wondering why I'm referring to Spring Bonnie and their variant Glitch Trap as them instead of him. Well that's actually because of a quick, blink and you'll miss it bit of lore revealed in FNAF World. Though the game itself is non-canon, simply serving as a fun quirky spin-off, there are actual bits of lore here and there, such as on Spring Bonnie's loading screen. Male? Female? I'm a rabbit. Who cares? It's possible that this is simply Scott Cawthon's way of poking fun at people who confuse Bonnie for a girl, given his name, which is typically used for the opposite sex. However, it's interesting that he chose to do this with the original version of Bonnie. And then later on in the series, with Sister Location, we meet two near-identical Bonnies, a boy and a girl. And with Sister Location happening shortly after the brand change, it's possible that this Bonnie duo was created as a result of the character's ambiguous gender. But that's just a theory. After Fred Bear's Family Diner, there would be the first ever Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. With this rebrand, the company ditched the old Springlock suits in favor of full-on animatronics, of which there was the introduction of Chica and Mr. Cupcake, Foxy the Pirate, a new version of Fred Bear known as Freddy Fazbear, and the newly remodeled Spring Bonnie, now known simply as Bonnie the Rabbit. This redesign would be one of the more jarring of the characters, whereas Fred Bear was phased out with the brown bear Freddy, Bonnie the guitarist was much bulkier and had dark blue fur. Now he may have a new Freddy and Bonnie, but Henry and William still tempted to keep the originals alive, or at least slowly face them out, and so Fred Bear and Spring Bonnie were kept around, though now they were permanently made in animatronics. A horrific incident would occur at the establishment, and a little boy would die in the jaws of Fred Bear, causing the restaurant to close down in 1983. Bonnie and the others would live on in the form of nightmares, haunting the boy who caused the accident. Though, interestingly, Spring Bonnie never appears as a nightmare, and it's possible this is because the boy recognized Spring Bonnie as a person, a friendly one, since in suit form, the mascot was portrayed by his own father, William Afton. Though those weren't the only active Bonnies at the time, because while this was transpiring, there was Circus Baby's Pizza World, a sister location featuring entirely new animatronics, along with a variant of the new Foxy and a combination of Fred Bear and Spring Bonnie. Bonnie, here known as Bon Bon, was attached to Funtime Freddy at the wrist, like a hand puppet, and along with this blue variant, there was a pink one named Bonnet. Again, as mentioned previously, the two different Bonnies could have been a result of Spring Bonnie not actually having a proper gender assigned to them, with children just assuming they were one or the other. After all, they're a bunny. Who cares? Now sometime after the incident of 1983, the Freddy Fazbear's restaurant would reopen, this time scrapping the Fred Bear and Spring Bonnie suits entirely, and keeping the old animatronics in the back room. Due to a serious lack of upkeep, and possible vandalisms due to the extent of the damages, the original animatronics were just too withered and decayed, with Bonnie in particular missing his arm and entire face. Though that wouldn't get in the way of Fazip Entertainment, however, because they took this as an opportunity to remodel them, making them appear much more cute and kid-friendly, and no doubt trying to distance themselves from the old designs that were associated with the biting incident. Freddy became larger, Chica became more feminine, Foxy was designed after a circus baby counterpart, and Bonnie looked like a cheap Easter Bunny toy. Things were looking good at the start, however after just a few weeks, there was another incident. This one known in the industry as the infamous Bite of 87. It's unclear who took the brain chunk out of the child's head, but I doubt it was any of the toys, at least not Freddy and Bonnie, their mouths just don't look dangerous enough. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza would close their doors once again, and after many years, there would be a third attempt at this thing. 
Believing enough time had passed, the new pizzeria would use animatronics based off the original rebrands, and Bonnie was given his face back, along with a blazing guitar. Unlucky for them though, a fire would start just before the grand reopening, and the entire place would burn to the ground. This little setback wouldn't stop Fazbear from becoming a household name, however, and many years later, with the opening of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place, business was booming, and the original band of animatronics have gotten a much more expensive and flashy design, looking like the perfect combination of the original animatronics and the remodeled toy variants. And Bonnie even got a Frank Sinatra-esque singing voice. I found my guitar, and I reached for the stars as I plunge it through your heart. Unfortunately though, good things just can't happen with this restaurant chain, and after the owner, Henry Emily, lures his former business partner child killer William Afton into the restaurant, he sets it on fire, killing them all and releasing any spirits trapped within. And this would be the very last time we ever see any functioning Bonnie animatronic in Freddy Fazbear's. Years later, right over the burned down pizza place which presumably still had corpses inside of it, Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex would open up, featuring an animatronic made up of Freddy, Chica, Foxy's replacement Roxy, and Bonnie. The band did great, and their advanced AI allowed them to interact like real people. And that might sound cool and all, but you know what sucks about being real? Some people are awful. Another animatronic in the building, Monty Gator, was very jealous of the band's success and his lack of fame, and so he lured Bonnie into his mini golf area and then destroyed him, ditching his mangled body in Bonnie Bowl, a Bonnie themed bowling alley. And quick disclaimer, no security breach never outright says this happened word for word, but it is incredibly, seriously, very, very beat into your head implied. The FNAF fandom has often taken random theories and decided it was canon, so I don't want to hear anyone complaining that I'm telling you this is canon, because it is. It might not outright be said, but you would have to be blind and deaf to miss this. And that has been the entire history of the Bonnie animatronic, the robot that gave even its creator nightmares. I know we didn't get into what happened with the Spring Bonnie suit, and thus the character of Springtrap, but I wanted to save William for his own video, and when that time comes, we'll also get into a lot more detail about things like the kids he murdered, like the little boy named Jeremy who's possessing Bonnie. Thank you for watching, feel free to share your thoughts down in the comments below, and like a hungry animatronic, I'll catch you next time. Have a nice day. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this, how about checking out the newest issue of the VHS comic book series, The Bear E Scary Cheesy Pizza Special, an unofficial parody of Five Nights at Freddy's. For legal reasons, it relies heavily on the tragedy of Domino's Pizza and inspiration from Chuck E. Cheese. But hey, if you like FNAF, you'll like this. And take it away, Andrea. Looking for more horror fun? You're goddamn right. Then check out the VHS comic book series, a parody of the horror genre that follows the lives of three teens as they fight to survive a horror movie, where every day is loaded with blood, boobs, and buds. The first two issues can be found in the description below. I was obsessed with the VHS.